there are certain things that computers are particularly good at and we can make use of these talents to make our programs in Sonic Pi more interesting and exciting. One thing that we can get the computer to do for us all day is to generate random numbers and because so many of the commands in Sonic Pi use numbers in some way, whether that's choosing what note to play or deciding what settings we'd like in our parameters, uh, by asking the computer to generate those numbers for us instead of choosing them for ourselves, we can add a certain element of randomness to what's going on in the music. To demonstrate this, I'm going to write a little loop program and use a play command. But instead of writing a number like 60 or colon C4 to be very specific about what note I would like, I'm instead going to use this thing called the ranged random function. And what that means is I'm going to get the computer every time it goes around the loop to pick me a different value between 50 and 80 and play that number. So let's have a go at that. I'm going to get it to sleep for a quarter of a second between each note so that we can hear them all. And this should just run forever, picking a random selection of different notes. Let's have a listen to that. As a musician, I think that is really cool. It's actually quite hard to introduce elements of randomness into your own playing when you're playing an instrument. And so here we can really explore the different sounds that we can get through trying to be much more random than we can do in real life. If we look here over at the right hand side of the screen, we'll see that we've got our log window. And that is really describing what happens when we run our Sonic Pi program. And we can see in detail just how random some of our choices were in that composition. Because I asked the loop to sleep for quarter of a second every time it ran, I'd expect there to be four things happening every second and that's exactly what we've got here. We've got our program running and every loop is going to create as a note and then rest for a quarter of a second. So when we started the program the the random function chose to play note 66.4644. Now we've not used any decimal notes yet. I've always been using whole numbers or integers with the play command. And so what's going on here? Well, when we say 66.4644, it's actually playing as a note that is almost halfway between note 66, which I think is F sharp, and note 67, which I think is G. So this is what I mean by random. The notes that are being chosen aren't the notes that we'd find on our piano keyboard. They're notes that kind of sit in between those keys and can sit anywhere on the range of pitches that our ears can listen to and understand. We can actually change this, and I might show you that later, so that it does just pick notes that sit on the keyboard. But for now, this is quite exciting. Now we're going to add some randomness, not just to the pitch that is being played, but also some of the parameters, so how loud or soft it's being played. So say I wanted to use my amp parameter, which again tells the synthesizer how loud or soft I want our note to be played. And I'm going to say, choose me some level for my amp parameter that sits somewhere between 0.2, which is pretty quiet, and 0.9, which is pretty loud. So now every time that our note gets played, it's not just going to be a random pitch, but it's also going to be a random volume. So there, some of the notes sounded pretty distant and far away, and some of the notes sounded much more up close, and that's because every time we played a note, a special setting for the amplitude or the volume of that sound was being picked for us at random. I think this is really cool and hopefully your brain is already buzzing with loads of ideas as to how you could make some cool stuff with this. There is one more thing that I want to point out about randomness in Sonic Pi and this might seem a little bit strange at first but actually helps us out loads in our composition. To show you all about this I've written this very simple composition. It makes use of the TB303 synth and it's got a loop in it that goes for five times. Every time the loop runs it's going to use the random function to pick us a number between 60 and 72. Because I've put this underscore i 
thing at the end of our our rand command it means that it's going to pick an integer so not one of those numbers that had loads of decimal places after it but a whole number so here we are actually picking notes that you'll find on a keyboard if it picks 60 it's going to play middle c if it picks 61 it's going to pick c sharp if it picks 62 it's going to pick d so we can obviously make our random functions stick more rigidly to the notes on the keyboard if we want to and this is how I want you to take a listen to the five notes that are generated by this program and try and remember them if you can. Okay, keep that melody in your head. I'm going to play this program again. And once again. Hopefully you've noticed that those melodies were all the same. And so you might be wondering, well, why on earth, if these notes are supposedly random, do we keep getting the same string of notes in our melody? Well, the reason for that is that for Sonic Pi to work really well and for us to use these random numbers effectively in compositions, it kind of helps for us to know how things are going to turn out in advance. And so while the numbers being picked are ultimately random, um, they do follow patterns. And so every time that we run a sequence of random numbers, unless we do something to change where we start from, those numbers are always going to come out the same way. It doesn't matter, we can still use randomness in our compositions without worrying too much about the fact that the numbers are going to come out the same way because most people would never ever know that they're coming out that way. But what's great about it is it means that there's a certain predictability about how our melodies and pieces are going to turn out even though they contain some random elements in them. Now I'm no computer scientist at all and I'm sure you'll be able to find a much better explanation of this elsewhere. But what's going on here when we're generating random numbers is that we start with some number, that's called a seed. And then with that seed we apply some kind of maths to generate a sequence of random numbers based on our original seed. So if we want to create a different set of random numbers, we don't have to really change the maths that we're doing. All we have to do is change the seed. And so we can actually write a command to Sonic Pi to say, actually, we don't want to use the default seed. Uh, we actually want to use a different thing. So let's say use random seed 200, and that will generate us a different set of five random numbers. But these will still be the same every time. But if I wanted a different set, I just need to change my seed. Including random numbers in our programs, I think, is probably one of the most powerful tools we have as computer music composers, as we will see in the next video when we take a look at someone's composition that makes use of them.